More lies from the retirement planning industry. All right, so remember, there's two types of lies. We got lies of commission. You know, I was, uh, you know, I was getting jiggy with somebody who wasn't my wife last night, and I tell my wife I wasn't getting jiggy with that person. That's a lie of commission. I was getting jiggy with her, and I lied to you. All right, that's that's not good. Like, don't get jiggy with another woman if you're married, and don't lie about it either. <clears throat> but then we have lies of omission. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that I spent a hundred thousand dollars on a, uh, I don't know, something. I just forgot. That's a lie of omission. I forgot to tell you. The retirement planning industry has lies of omission all the time, all the time. It's freaking disgusting. Where they just, we, uh, we didn't sell you because you know we didn't. Well, we just forgot to tell you. So I'm reading this. All right. How do families fare when the breadwinner retires? This is from the 1983 monthly labor review from the BLS. 1983 monthly labor review from the BLS. All right. And I show you oh, so much fun stuff to read in here. It's nuts. I turn off all these. Oh, before I forget, remember what my man Mark Dice says. Here's Nikki Haley. This is why Nikki Haley's a clown. No one should vote for Nikki Haley unless you hate America. We should all stand with Bubba Wallace today against the cowards who secretly put, put his, the noose in his garage doll. Watch your back, cowards. Nikki's coming for you. Nikki's coming. She's gunning for you, Nikki Haley. Bubba has a bigger army than you do. And we're coming to watch your back because we're coming up on you. We're sneaking on you like ninjas because we're Nikki Haley. Mark Dice crushes, dude. It's funny. Nikki Haley changed the name of her boyfriend who is now her husband. Kind of weird. It's a weird woman. My wife used to like Nikki Haley, now no longer does because my wife is smart. So let's see if I can't find what I'm looking for here. Yeah, so here's the BLS stuff. Monthly labor review, just, I mean, just tons. Inflation, the bit, century of wage, ooh, that looks good. Century of wage statistics, BLS con. So a centennial timetable, uh, use of employment data to estimate office space demand. Working mothers reached record number in 1984. That's not good. Um, anyway, just so much freaking stuff. Oh, look at this. Productivity, making air conditioners, refrigerator equipment, and furnaces. Oh, man, I love this stuff, dude. Anyway, so much stuff in here. So I'm reading this from 1983. We go to 1983. Now, I just started a video, buddy. And we're going to show you it's in here someplace. But one of these are uh, things right here. So we're going to, can I bring it up? Do I got it up here? Hold on. Hang tight. Hang tight, everybody. Hang tight. So here's the, uh, the article. Using national longitudinal survey data on the retirement experience of men, Researchers provide some insights on the economic situation of families in which the, ma the major wage earner is retired. And what they say, they've been studying these individual people for 17 years. Older men in the National Longitudinal Survey, now ages 62 and 76, have been interviewed 11 times in 17 years. All right, so older men who are now between 62 and 76, they've been interviewed 11 times. So the same people, that's, that's what you want. You want the same people we're interviewing, not just... Josh and my brother and then my sister. We want Josh, Josh, Josh. Does that make sense? All right. So let's go down here. This is freaking nuts, dude. Being retired does not preclude labor market activity. About one in six retirees were in the labor force in 1980. Men forced to retire because of mandatory plans were more likely to be in the labor force. Their participation rate was 24% compared with 16% for all retirees. So John Bogle, for instance. He got forced out of Vanguard. He was forced to retire. Then he started the Bogle Foundation, whatever it's called, that he actually had an office at Vanguard. So being retired, men forced out because of age. That's kind of what they're saying. He, John Bogle didn't stop working. So again, about one in six retirees were still in the labor force in 1980. In the 1980 survey, employed retirees, John Bogle, and again, they didn't interview him. I don't know. I doubt it. But they didn't interview John Bogle specifically. I'm just saying John Bogle was forced out of his work because he had 65 and then he still found a job in the labor force doing his own thing. <clears throat> but in the 1980 survey, employed retirees, John Bogle, were asked their main reason for working during retirement. The two most frequent answers were inflation and bored with retirement. Hmm. That's interesting. So only one in six were in the labor force. Retirees were in the labor force. That means five in six were stayed retired. Of those one in six, 30% said they were still working. That's, that's a small number because of inflation. And 26%, another small number, 36% of one, one out of six said because they're bored with retirement. 
Retirees who did not participate in the labor market in 1976 showed little desire to do so. Only 2% of whites and 5% of blacks said they would accept a job if one were offered. Interesting. Most retirees are not interested in working. That makes sense. In 1980, 93% of the retirees who were not working responded negatively to a hypothetical job offer. And in 1981, when a question about part-time work was included, this negative response rate was reduced by only 5%. So these people were not working. They said, I don't want to work. I don't want to. Even if they had a hypothetical job offer, even if it's only part-time. Less than 10%. In 1975, voluntary retirees and their families were making do with a family income one-third less than the year prior to retirement. One-third less. You hear that? That's not 8%. That's 66%. One-third less. That's adjusted for inflation. The major sources of family income were Social Security, received by 90% uh, of those who retired at the normal age, but only 52% of those forced out early because of poor health. Isn't that interesting? Social Security was received by 90% of those retired at their full, their normal retirement age, but only by 52% of those because of poor health. That's, you know, if you get hurt, this sucks. There's no other way around it. Almost all retirees receive Social Security benefits, all right? And only 7% receive public assistance. Huh. Almost all retirees receive Social, and only 7% receive public assistance. Interesting. These two researchers, Parnes and Less, found that median family income, adjusted for inflation, of married retirees in 1980 was about half of what it was in 19, uh, the year before retirement. Median family income. You okay there, loudmouth? Trying to do a video. Knuckleheads. Median family income. For married retirees in 1980, it was about half the income they received pre-retirement. If we go back to 1976, we see right here, uh, in 1975, voluntarily, voluntary retirees were making to do making do with a family income of about one-third less. So they're making do with 66%, and yet in 1980, they're making do with, and this is married people, making do with 50% of what their pre-retirement income was. Nonetheless, in 1980, 59% of married retirees and 48% of unmarried retirees said their income was adequate or better. Hey, no, don't interrupt. That's rude. That's rude, baby. Come here. 59% of married retirees and 48% of unmarried retirees said their income was adequate or better. An additional one-third said they had just enough to get by. So basically, 75% of the population was saying we're getting by or it's better than adequate, or it's, we're getting by or it's adequate or better, even though we just showed you. Oh boy, here we go again. I was saying, mm -hmm. yes, where's your tennis ball? Where is it? Are you happy retiree? Are you happy retiree? Mm -hmm. Can you all hear that tail? That's his tail. I hear it on his brother. I know it. I know these two antibodies. You can't say antibodies. Mm -hmm. I'll take them. Check with Pablo. All right, there we go. It's fun. Everybody's having fun. You want to come up, Finn? You want to show everybody again? All right. I love you, too. So basically, 75% of the population said their income was adequate or better than adequate, or they're just getting by. And only 7% were on welfare. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Nonetheless, we see here. However, uh, Parnes and Less observed very profound differences by race and responses, particularly among married retirees. 25% of blacks, well, 8% of whites said they could not make ends meet. So only 8% of whites said they couldn't make ends meet, yet 25% of blacks said they couldn't. That's not good. But that means 75% of blacks could make ends meet, and 92% of whites could make ends meet. And again, what do we say? They're living on a half of the income they received in the year before retirement. The 1980 survey asked questions about retirees' use of leisure time the retirement decisions, and their general satisfaction in life. Most retirees said life in retirement was about the same as they expected. Most retirees said life in retirement was about the same as they expected. Are you going to, are you expecting to, are you going to retire if your expectations in retirement are you going to be bankrupt and living down by, in the van down by the river with Chris Farley? No. 
So he said, yeah, I'm going to have a, I'm going to go hang out and retire, you know, watch a couple games, maybe go to a couple of baseball games, drink a couple beers down the, at the boat with the fellas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're not going to, I mean, you're not expecting to be broke. So if you were expecting to be broke, you wouldn't retire. It doesn't make sense. So right here, most retirees said life in retirement was, was about what they expected. One out of four said it was better. But the strong effect of reason for retirement on well-being you know, well is that illustrated by the fact that among those who had retired for health reasons, more than 30% found retirement worse than they expected. All right. So, so, but if you retired for health reasons, 30% found it worse than expected. But yet in the overall group, so you have to remember, you have the totality of retirees. Then you take a subset of that and say these people retired for health reasons. Of that subset of the entirety, only 30% said it was less than expected, worse than expected. And yet of the entirety, the totality of retirees, 25% said it was better than expected. Uh, let's see. Health, occupational level, and family income positively influence the extent of uh, purposeful leisure time activities, which in turn increase life satisfaction. Participating in paid labor market and being married to a healthy spouse also significantly <laughs> increased life satisfaction for retirees. In fact, I was just talking to people. Come here. Uh uh. Enough. No, we just let you out. We just did. <laughs> Come here. And uh, <laughs> he just retired, this guy. And uh, I said his wife, we'll call her Brenda. I said, Brenda, why we got you working until you're 67? Another seven years. Because uh, we'll call him, uh, we'll call him Rusty. Brendan Rusty, because because Rusty just retired. I need a break. <laughs> and then she's had to throw an end for health insurance too. So oh boy, and they've been married almost thirty years. And Rusty's like, yeah, well, if we, I guess if I want to be married another thirty years. I should probably let her work. Not that she he has a say in the matter, but it's just kind of funny. They're cute. And uh, <laughs> I said, I have a good spouse, but she goes, yeah, I like to go to work. I like what I do, and I like to talk with the other people at work and gripe about the job. I said, no, I get it. I get it. And of course, they're crushing. But participating in the paid labor market and being married to a healthy spouse. So being, basically, your health is a significant determination of your ability to retire. Keep up your health and you're going to be able to retire. At just, and you'll retire at your own ends. If you were forced out because your health, hey, if it happened to you, on a, you know, that unexpected, that sucks, man. There's no other way around that. If it happened to you because you're just eating freaking, you know, bad and you're drinking and just, you know, that's kind of on you, man. Anyway, the point, why do I say these are lies of omission? Because, again, we know about 75% of retirees are satisfied. Or they're comfortable, if that makes sense. They're not living in a van down by the river. We've known that since 1983 and even before that. And yet, these people are living off half their income. And we know that if you're married in retirement, you're likely, I just, even back then, you separate the married versus the unmarried. The married were uh, unequivocally in good shape. Even the black married people with 75%, they had enough to live on. These are facts. And blacks back in the night, that means the blacks who were working from 1950, 60, and 70, who weren't treated the best. There's just no two ways around that. If they were married, they had adequate income to get by. 92% of whites who were married had adequate income to get by. I, I just, I just, there's just no other way around. I think they have a single people, I can't remember what it is. But I mean, that's, I mean, it is what it is. We've known this for freaking decades now. They were living off half their pre-retirement income. And yet somehow we still have perpetual nonsense. You need 80%, you know, they're going to be, Dead, desperate in retirement. No, oh, no, don't bark. We have no evidence of any of this. None. And yet the researchers have got to know this. They have to. You cannot be a researcher and not know this. What have you been researching? If not, if you haven't been researching the government data set, I don't know what the hell you're doing. You're researching Aon Insurance Company? Do they have a something to sell you? Of course they do. These are lies of omission. They're not telling us the truth. They're just not. If you're a researcher in retirement planning and you don't know this, then you need to go freaking pound sand, dude. If you're a researcher in the retirement planning industry and you do know this and you're not sharing it with people, you're a liar. And both are unequivocally just as evil. It's freaking sickening. Why are you guys doing this? I mean, I, I 
don't know why, because I don't know why liars lie. Why do people lie? I don't know. But these are lies of omission, and it's uh, it's just not good. And I, I hope, if anything from my channel is to say, I don't trust any of these guys, dude. None of them. You don't trust me. Go read it yourself. Go read it yourself. Now, God bless. Love to hear thoughts. And don't forget, if these videos help you, you want to buy me a cup of Joe, it's in a doobie-doo down below. Buy me a coffee. I'll take one off you. All right. We'll see you.